1 Timothy chapter 4, to read verses 8 and 9. For bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is, and of that which is to come. This is a faithful saying, and worthy of all acceptation. Bodily exercise profiteth little. I um, wanted to do a real quick video here on that issue, because I know a lot of people out there, uh, they get into bodybuilding and all the other stuff, and lifting weights and working out and whatever else, and people have asked me over the years, is it right for a Christian to get into bodybuilding? Okay, now I don't mean physical fitness, um, bodily exercise. All right, bodily exercise is fine. You're trying to stay in, in health, good health and whatever else. Good, that's fine. But when you start getting into trying to increase the diameter of your biceps and you're trying to get a, a ripped abs and all this other you know chest muscles and good looking legs and whatever um is that right for a christian well uh i will give you my thoughts on that and there's another aspect to the thing of bodily exercise as well the thing of um nutritional health and everything else so that's another thing i want to talk about but um <clears throat> on the issue of bodybuilding uh, if you compare what Paul is saying in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8 and 9, to what he says in Romans chapter 7, down towards the end of the chapter, where he's talking about, um, I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. Um, I think it's you know, safe to assume that uh, you want to be really careful about exalting the flesh. And bodybuilding to the point where you're trying to look look good, you know, without your clothes on. Um, uh, for a Christian, you're entering into some very dangerous territory there. Um, just, you know, if you come out here and you do the kind of work out in the, you know, you have a physical job or whatever else, you'll get strong. You know, you'll, you'll have a, a muscular build. That's just a natural thing that happens. But it's not the same thing as some gym rat or whatever that's got, you know, a good looking body or whatever. Uh, you're starting to get into the, a very fleshly, very fleshly realm when you do that. Uh, grouse flying over there. And <clears throat> so I would recommend against that, to be quite frank with you. Um, I got into it back when I was in high school. I remember I was six foot four and 150 pounds, and I wanted so bad to have, you know, look muscular and whatever. And I, I'd go to GNC, you know, and they would have the uh, General Nutrition Center or whatever it's called, the store, and they'd have these bodybuilder guys, you know, huge big guys and whatever. And uh, you know, if you take this Mega Mass 2000 drink, you'll look the same, you know, as long as you're working out really hard and whatever eating a good diet and everything. And I thought, all right, you know, and we had a weight bench and everything and I was lifting weights and I'd thinking to myself, you know, hey, I'm gonna be a huge, big muscular guy someday. Not realizing that these guys that are huge and big ripped muscles, Arnold Schwarzenegger and everything, guys like that. Uh, yeah, they're taking steroids, okay? <laughs> so I didn't quite understand that. And other, uh, you know, Muscle, muscular uh, enhancing drugs and whatever. Um, you don't get that big just by, uh, you know, being nutritional, nutritional health and whatever. You have to do some, you know, you know, life hack type of stuff to get really gigantic like that. Didn't understand that. But, um, <clears throat> you know, I'll show you my bodily exercise that I do because I'm killing two birds with one stone. I stay in good shape. And I split firewood. So here's my little splitting things I built. Just a little stump of wood with some plywood screwed to the top and an old tire on top of that. You set your wood inside that and then you can split it and it doesn't fall over each time. It's kind of nice. But uh, when you're a Christian, you should have no confidence in the flesh. You should understand that your flesh is actually your enemy. So it's this weird fine line thing where you want to stay in good nutritional health and you want to do bodily exercise that's profitable um, and it's you know it's 
splitting firewood by hand is a really good, great way to exercise. And of course, even the thing of picking up the pieces of firewood, throwing them onto a pile like this, um, and then taking them and stacking them later and, and whatever, it's exercise. It's doing things, going for walks in the morning. Um, there's work that you can do that will keep you in good shape. Uh, and that's good. That's profitable. Um, but when you get into the thing of that you're trying to increase your flesh and make your flesh look really good, um, that's sin. There's no nice way for me to put it. You're getting into sin when you get into that. Um, and you're going to start to have some fleshly issues because you are empowering your flesh. The flesh wars against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. Okay, Galatians chapter 5 talks about that. Again, you need to study the scriptures. I am not your final authority. The King James Bible needs to be your final authority. And so <clears throat> I just feel like I need to address this thing. And another part of this is the thing of nutritional health, which I mentioned earlier. Now, I am a fanatic for natural health. Don't get me wrong. I am very much into um, eating the right types of foods. You know, I want to know what are the foods that can really propel me forward in uh, terms of health. Um, for many years, I was a junk food addict uh, for a good portion of my life, and I have uh, health issues as a result of that. Um, <clears throat> I found out recently that mitral valve prolapse, which I was diagnosed with when I was a boy, is actually just a magnesium deficiency. You know, sometimes my, my eye will, like the around my eye or whatever, it'll twitch. That's magnesium deficiency. That's the the lesser sign of magnesium deficiency. Um, the big sign is if you're really bad, then you'll have heart palpitations. Your heart will not, the mitral valve in there, it will prolapse. It will not work correctly. And uh, Dr. Eric Berg t did a video on that, showing the proof of it and everything else. So I thought, huh, so all it was, I didn't have a heart condition. I didn't have a weak heart. It was just a magnesium deficiency. And you'll see that with most health issues. You, it's a deficiency in something. And, you know, if you go to the medical establishment, they'll say, you know, well, we need to uh, replace it or, you know, cut this out or do that or do this or, you know, whatever. Uh, they won't tell you about the nutritional aspect of it. So it's good, okay? I am warring warfare against the devil and his system. I am supposed to let, he who let, let, letteth will now let until he be taken out of the way. The body of Christ is here to hinder the Antichrist system, to slow it down from coming in, to make enough, um, to show people that there's uh, that system of the Antichrist and that you need to not be part of that, okay? So I want to be in good health. I need to be in good health. Um, the Apostle Paul talked about, you know, and in another place, he's talking about keeping under his body and bringing his body into subjection. And again, one of the best ways for you to fight sin out there in the world, the lust of the flesh, pride of life, you know, and things, is to keep your body down and to tell your body no. And uh, I'll tell you, one of the hardest things for me, going to the grocery store and seeing all the junk food that I used to eat there. And I look and I see those jelly donuts and I see the... Um, strawberry and grape nerds. I used to love them. I don't, I mean, they're just sugar with food coloring. Absolutely no nutritional quality to it. I used to work at a, a Susquehanna Sante Boat Works and uh, many years ago. And on break, I would drink Dr. Pepper. And I would take Dr. Pepper, cans of Dr. Pepper out, and I'd be drinking them while I was working and things. And, and I'd go through about six, six or more cans a day of Dr. Pepper, so, oh man, I look at that stuff now and I think, man, if I drank that or ate some of the stuff I used to eat, <clears throat> I'd be so sick. <laughs> I've tried it a couple of times. I get weak, you know, and I'll, I'll go get some Little Debbie treats or something like that or some dumb thing, you know, that freshly baked donuts that they make at the store there, I'll just get stupid and not very often, believe me. We're talking maybe once every two years. I'll just get dumb and I'll think, oh, I'll just get one, just for old times sake, and I'm sick. I get real sick after eat, eating it. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, I'm, I'm a fanatic for natural health. Uh, I want to use it to make myself um, 
more powerful spiritually because I know that it, it affects my thinking and everything else too. Clarity of thought comes from eating good nutrition. But having said that, you can also make your body into an idol. Uh, you can get into this thing of just constantly checking on your body and I wonder what it, you know deficiencies I have and what nutritional needs and, and you just spend all your time on your body. And um, you know, uh, some aspects of serving the Lord are not good for your physical bodily health. That's why the Bible talks about there in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8, about bodily exercise profiteth little, but spiritual matters, spiritual things are more profitable. And um, that's a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation. There are times that uh, <clears throat> you need to spend some time watching videos like mine, and you might be sitting there for a few hours, you know, listening to that. Well, if, you know, sitting is okay, um, but if you're doing a lot of it, it's not really the best for your health, physical health. But if you're learning things spiritually and you're really growing in your walk with the Lord, that's good for spiritual health. You see what I'm saying? So, um, it's complicated, very complicated, because you want to make sure that you are in good physical health um, <clears throat> so that you can stay in the fight, so that you can say, okay, I'm not going to be shipwrecked here because I, my health has failed me. But you don't need, you know, 20 inch biceps and, and six pack abs to do that. All right. Um, so, you know, I remember I saw a comment the one time somebody said about, you know, is it wrong to listen to heavy metal to get yourself pumped up for your workout? Um, yes. Uh, if you're having to, to do this thing so you can, you know, get yourself, and I used to do it, you know, so again, don't look at me as I'm, oh, you're just some judgmental Pharisee or whatever. I used to do this stuff. So you see, I've removed the beam out of my own eye so I can judge the speck in yours. That's the biblical method. The whole judge not, lest ye be judged thing and whatever, the Bible doesn't say that it, those, in those exact words, but it's talking about hypocritical judgment. It's not saying you can't judge people. All right, you have to understand that. Um, so <clears throat> I have done this thing of trying to, you know, look good and, you know, wear, you know, want to wear a muscle shirt and, you know, and all this stuff. Um, and quite frankly, I just, I gave up on all that stuff many years ago. Um, I don't want to go out in the public and have my, you know, wear as little clothing as I can so that I can get the looks from women or something like that. I mean, even if I was not a married man, I'm a married man. And uh, so I wouldn't do that because of my wife. And also, I don't want that example being shown to my son. But even if I was a single guy as a Christian, as a preacher, I don't want people seeing my body, all right? Um, yes, I'll wear short sleeve shirts in the summertime, but I don't go out of my way to roll up my sleeves or try to look like a strong guy. No, I don't do that. Um, so that's just because you're scrawny, Dunley, or something. Okay, you wanna get fleshly like that? Well then, whatever, you can, you can make fun of me, whatever you want to do. I'm six foot three, 230 pounds. I'm not a little guy. Um, and I'm in pretty decent shape, but I'm not going to show off. I'm not going to walk around and try to get attention or something like that. Why would I do that? Uh, I look at myself now and I look at my hands and I think, boy, my hands are starting to get kind of wrinkly. <laughs> you know, my skin's getting that old man look. You know, I'm 48 now. I'm going to be 49 here in a few months. Um, well, you better start lifting weights then, man. You really get yourself in good shape. I, like I said, I did the weight lifting thing for a while in high school. But after that, I dropped it. And it was so funny because, I mean, I, would, I was so fervent, you know. I wanted to gain weight. I wanted to be this big muscular guy. You know, back in high school, they'd make us do this uh, shirts and skins thing in basketball. Where, you, you know, half the guys had to wear their... They're a Pequa Valley High School shirt, t-shirt, or gym uniform, you know. And the other guys would have to wear no shirt. And then, 
you know, you're playing basketball that way. And I was always so ashamed of that because I was such a skinny, you know, they used to call me Gumby. Uh, <laughs> and so I was really skinny. And, um, and I'd be ashamed and I'd think, man, I wish, you know, just wait till I get my big muscles. You wait. That never happened. <laughs> I mean, I might have gotten a little bit toned or something, but uh, lifting weights every night and whatever, getting real fervent about it, I didn't gain weight. It was a joke. You know, I'd, I remember I'd, I would, uh, I'd go to bed and I'd, I'd take, they had this Mega Mass 2000, you know, 2000 calories per shake, you know, chocolate stuff. And uh, I'd mix it and I'd have one of those uh, before I'd go to bed and I'd have a piece of, toast couple pieces of toast and out of the toaster oven with peanut butter and then I'd sprinkle this chocolate powder mix you know, this drink mix stuff on top of that and you know probably 4,000 calories or something before I'd go to bed and I'd think now wake up tomorrow I'm gonna be you know huge or something and I'd go to bed I'd be 155 pounds or something wake up the next morning be 148 or whatever and just oh I lost weight you know, throughout the night I didn't want that. I wanted to be heavier, you know, I wanted to gain weight. And, and for many years, I've basically, my wife will joke me and she says, you have the metabolism of a hummingbird, you know? Yeah, I can eat lots of food and, and uh, just lose weight. Always had a hard time trying to gain weight. And uh, you, think, you say, well, that's really good or whatever. Well, not necessarily because I had a lot of headache issues and you know, really feeling weak and drained and, uh, you know, so blood pressure issues and not blood pressure, but uh, blood sugar issues. So not really something to brag about, you know, having that kind of metabolism and just, you know, burning through food so quickly and whatever. But the whole thing is I tried so hard to be this weightlifting guy, you know, and I'm just going to be this huge ripped guy, you know, the next Arnold Schwarzenegger or something. I tried that for a while didn't work <laughs> and ironically the thing that made me gain weight what actually helped me to gain weight was working out in the woods logging I got into logging and when I got into logging um, you know I started to gain weight started to split firewood and uh, my fingers were so skinny in high school just real thin little fingers and my hands were real skinny and and I get made fun of for that too in high school, you know. Uh, but by the time I got out of high school, I started gaining a lot of physical weight. And um, my hands got thicker, my fingers got thicker, got stronger. And uh, I remember when I first started to split firewood, boy, phew, my hands would get so sore. Oh, man. And as time went by, I was gaining more weight, gaining more strength. And... I got to this size because of working out in the woods. And so, um, <clears throat> just some advice here, brethren. Uh, can you go and you can, you know, spend some time working out at a gym and get, you know, muscular and whatever? Yeah, you can do that. Have a home gym and get muscular and whatever. You say, well, brother, I just want to get muscular looking because it's, it pleases my wife. You know, she likes to look at me with big muscles and whatever. You can make the arguments, okay? But what I'm saying is, just based on my own experience, based on uh, what I've seen over the years, if you start to get fleshy like that, um, you're going to start to give in to your flesh more. You will. And in terms of the whole natural health thing, eat as good as you can. Be as natural as you can. But uh, don't get so caught up in your bodily exercise that you forget about the spiritual that you start to slack off and uh, I'll tell you right now there's a lot of these modern Christians out there that um, they have the big muscles and the workout you know gym rat type of, of physique and whatever and and a lot of times they'll get tattoos too because they're showing their their muscles so they want people to see their muscles with the tattoos the cool tattoos and look at me I'll, I'll pose with my shirt off and whatever look at, I'm tough uh, be real careful about that stuff and um, very dangerous to get into uh, you are not supposed to exalt your flesh and bring your flesh up it's supposed to your life is supposed to reflect godliness and a spiritual power that's there 
and spiritual power comes through a number of channels and that is channels not in youtube channels but a number of th ways that is you first of all you have to be saved you have to be born again new creature in christ jesus old things are passed away behold all things are become new second corinthians 5 17 you have to be a new creature in christ jesus that's the new birth that's there and the new birth being born again is for christians today i have a whole study on that to prove it um, that's number one. Number two, you have to have the right Bible. Okay, you don't carry a cheap sword into battle, one that's made out of aluminum foil or you know a little lightsaber or something you got at the dollar store. Now you want to have a real sword, uh, and the best one is the King James Bible for English-speaking Christians. You need to have that, and you need to rightly divide. You have to understand the Scriptures dispensationally. Uh, if you don't do that, then you're a workman that needs to be ashamed. Because you're supposed to rightly um, uh, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. 2 Timothy 2.15 And you have to understand that proper division, or else you'll make a mess of the Bible. Again, I have studies on that. Secondary Channel has a two-part study, I think it is, Understanding Dispensationalism. I preached it, I think, eight years ago or something, eight or nine years ago. And I still stand by the what I said in that study. Um, <clears throat> but you have to be saved, born again, have the right Bible, and then you have to have a sanctified, separated life from the lost world. And, um, and that does mean that you have to have a nutritional aspect there. Bodily exercise profiteth little. You have to keep your body in good shape. Otherwise, you will be shipwrecked. But don't fall for the thing of the gym rat thing and and whatever and looking in the mirror at your body and your your muscles and everything and, oh man i have to really warn against that uh not a good thing to get into as a christian i mean again just think about the the logic of this i'm going to do all this workout stuff and get my body looking really good and then cover it up no people don't do that they want to get their body looking really good so that they can uncover their flesh well, if a woman causes a man to lust after her, or if a man lusts after a woman, he's committed adultery with her already in his heart. Jesus warned about that. <clears throat> well, if you're going out and dressing immodestly as a woman, you're going to cause men to lust. And it works both ways, too. A man goes out dressed immodestly, and he's got, you know, short little shorts on or something, and a muscle shirt or whatever, or not wearing a shirt or something. Women are going to lust. And you need to think about that. Don't cause other people to sin. So, short video turned into however long this one is. But uh, it is a subject that is important. And I think it's something that we all need to consider. So, that will be it. And we'll see you in upcoming videos. As always, thank you very much for your support. Thank you for your prayers. And thank you for watching.